start with uh, just a little presentation, uh, just a little intro. Welcome from our head, Dr. Chris Paduska. So as Dr. Paduska says, we're here to help you. And it's a little bit of a different learning experience this semester. So we'll all try to work together as best we can. And uh, we really are here to help you. So don't be afraid to reach out to us. So let's see if everything works. OK, so this looks like a wordy slide, but I'm not going to really talk a lot about it. These are the total programs that we offer in, in the Department of Physics and Physical Oceanography. There are many, honors in physics, major in physics, and so forth. We have joint majors, for example, chemistry and physics joint honors. Uh, one of our most popular programs is applied math and physics uh, programs. They tend to blend the, the love of physics and math for many people. And we even have a major in environmental physics. Also have, you can also do a minor in a degree, and you should be aware of this, that a minor is eight courses in another subject. So if you're doing a physics major, you could do a minor in computer science by doing eight computer science courses. So. I think that's enough about that. The web page is there and the links are there. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and uh, I'll be glad to answer your question. I guess one thing to say is that a normal program is uh, is uh, 40 courses. So five courses per semester, two semesters per year, four years. That's typically the way it goes. So I'm gonna talk mostly about first year courses and and what's uh, different this year and what's this and how they're gonna work. So we have four first year courses. We have physics 1020, 1021, 1050, and 1051. 1020 and 1021 are algebra-based courses, and they're geared more towards people going into uh, things like uh, biological sciences of any type, uh, perhaps earth science, uh, biochemistry. 1050, 1051 are calculus-based courses. So they're geared towards people going into hardcore uh, physics or um, perhaps engineering and that kind of thing. So you can pick whichever one you like. Um, it depends a little bit on your math background. So all the courses have math uh, prerequisites or co-requisites that you had to be a bit careful about. So how are lectures gonna work in these four courses this semester? Well, all the lectures are gonna be what we call, it's a big word, asynchronous delivery. And what that means is that the lectures will be recorded as video and you, you can view them online in a Brightspace shell. So every student will have access to a Brightspace shell and that's where most of your course components will be. Um, typically, the lectures will be released on the day of the lecture. You don't need to be logged in at scheduled time to review the video. It'll be stored up there, and so you can just watch it. If you're in a very different time zone, you can watch it uh, at your leisure. However, in Physics 1020 and 1021, I know this for sure, there will be after lecture mini quizzes. So you have to do those mini quizzes within, a, say, 12 hours of the lecture time. Or, um, so you, you, you leave it for four days to okay um as so that's the way the lectures are going to work and the reason for that is that the bandwidth uh almost everywhere is not big enough we have very big classes in first year um more than 200 closer to 300 in some sections and uh the bandwidth is not there to let all students log in and watch video at the same time so it's a technical uh, issue not that we wouldn't like to do it um when you submit something in in uh, D2L, in Brightspace, D2L and Brightspace are sort of interchangeable names. Uh, you will upload it into your Brightspace shell. And there, from there, things will be graded online. So things like quizzes, assignments, you'll upload it into Brightspace shell, usually as a PDF, but there may be other formats. And uh, it'll be graded online, and then your grades will appear in um, in the Brightspace shell under a grade tab. 
So I'm just going to go to another slide. So, uh, for example, something like this could be submitted, and uh, the, the prop for the TA can actually go and see this. You can load it up into D2L. They can go and see it right on it, put a grade in, and then when you open it up the next time, when it becomes visible to you, you can see the grade. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward process, but you will need to know how to be able to take a picture of your written work, uh, turn it into a good PDF, and upload it into D2L. But that's fairly very straightforward. So that's how you're going to you're going to submit your work. I'm going to talk a little bit about the textbooks in the in the in the four courses. So in Physics 1020, 1021, the algebra-based course, the uh, book is Physics by James Walker. It's fifth edition. And uh, this is the version that you want. It needs to have this cover. It's an algebra-based textbook. And you can buy it in many forms at the bookstore. So I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. So you need to buy it from the bookstore because each of the textbooks comes with a code for mastering physics, which is our online assignment system. Um, so you need to have the code. You can't buy the code um, on the web. If you buy the code on the web, you won't be able to use it. So it will be a waste of your money. So you need to buy it from the bookstore. We've arranged these special deals with the bookstore so that you can uh, get a better deal. Or the, the basic deal, say, for example, Physics 1020, is uh, physics with mastering physics. You get a paper coil version, you get ETEX, and you get the code for mastering physics, and it's $120. Uh, for comparison, if you, buy, if you don't want the paper coil, if you don't want the paper version at all, you can buy the mastering with the ETEX and the uh, no paper book, basically, but you still get the ETEX and the mastering physics code, and it's still 115. So the 120 is a sweet deal if you can get access, you know, if you want the paperback version, and and you're in a, somewhere where it can be shipped to you within reason. The bookstore will ship uh, anywhere they claim, right? You can also buy. So, but perhaps more importantly to a lot of students, you can actually buy bundles, and the bundles are. Things like, so for example, if you're doing chemistry, physics 1020, and uh, biology 1001, all of those would cost you perhaps, say, $360. Or instead, if you buy it as a bundle, uh, you can get the paper version with uh, all three together for $345. So you save uh, 15 bucks. If you take the bundle without the paper version, you get it for 288. So you can save a bit of money by buying the bundles. There's also a, a physics uh, biology bundle and a chemistry physics bundle. So you can save a few dollars that way. But again, you have to buy it from the bookstore in order to get the uh, mastering physics code. Online mastering physics is just uh, no good. And it's because we've arranged these special bundles here. So that's physics 1020. The, Textbook for Physics 1050 is uh, a new textbook this year. It's called University F Physics by Young and Friedman. And again, uh, nice cover on, on it. And uh, bundles here are a little um, more restrictive. There's not as many people that are doing all three sciences. There is no biology bundle, but the basic uh, University Physics with the paper is 149. The one without the paper is 115. Um, and there's a chem physics bundle uh, with and without the paper. So you can uh, decide which one you want. And if you go to the university bookstore website, there's a lot of information there, but it's a little bit confusing. So this will help you decide uh, which uh, bundle you need, if any. So if anybody has any questions at that, about that, I'll gladly ask it at the end. Most of these should be available in the bookstore now, but up to yesterday, they were still trying to sort out a few issues with the physics 1050. This is the book for physics 1050 and 1050. I oh, know, sorry, just 1050 this semester. The 1051 textbook, because most people who are doing physics 1051 this semester will have taken 1050 in a previous semester and we've changed, we're in the process of changing books, they will still have the old textbook, which is university physics. Uh, it's actually physics for scientists and engineers strategic approach and it's by uh, Randall Knight and the thing about this book is that the code if you bought the book last year your code from last year should still be good for this year so physics 1051 will continue to use for this semester the uh, book that you purchased uh, a year ago in a year so codes are usually good for a year or two years we always say two years but if you have any trouble you can contact me and I can get with that 
Uh, my email is rgolding, R-G-O-U-L-D-I-N-G at mun.ca, just in case we forget to put it down later. So that's the textbooks. So now I'm going to talk just a little bit about the lab, so I won't be too long. But uh, this is probably the thing that has people most concerned, is uh, how do first year online labs work this semester in physics? They're different in physics than they are in chemistry and biology. We all have, as you know, very different kinds of uh, labs that we do. So we've gone through, our lab staff has, and this is their work. This is mostly the work, I believe, of uh, Edward Hayden and uh, Justin Pittman. So I'm kind of using their slides. Um, so they've gone through a lot of work to make our labs transport into a sort of a version of remote or online labs. So let's talk about that. First of all, where can you find your labs? When the course starts, you can find your labs in the Brightspace shell, but there will be a dedicated Brightspace shell. So it'll say, for example, you look up in the top right here, it says Physics 1020 Labs. So when you log into Brightspace, you will see a, a lab shell that you can uh, then enter, right? So it's organized completely separately from the course shell. All the links to pre-labs, so most of your labs will have a pre-lab that you have to do to before you can start the lab. Uh, all the lab guides and uh, the actual, anything to do with the experiment will be found in this shell. All the resources will be there. You can also make contact with your lab instructors through here. So it's a separate dedicated Brightspace shell, self-contained. And it's buried within Brightspace, so there's some security involved in that. How do we, how do we run a, a physics lab online? Well, as I said, the lab staff have worked very hard to create these labs, so there's a couple of diff different sort of scenarios. There will be some home-based experiments, and that'll be an experiment that you do at home using uh, simple things like coins. Uh, it turns out that all coins all over the world are well documented what their mass is. So it's easy to, they're a very good standard unit. Uh, string, tape measures, so very simple things that you could do at home. You may have to do some simple experiments. Uh, in the picture here, you can see they're dropping a ball and uh, taking a, a video. So another way of doing it is to use some video analysis. So you would use your phone, or most likely you would, uh, uh, just a second, uh, you would be given a video that we would fill in, in our lab. And then you would uh, uh, analyze that video with data that's free from uh, our students. So one of two options, either you would take make a simple video of dropping something or coins sliding along the table and uh, analyze it using some free software. Um, the other possibility, the third possibility is that uh, uh, we give you a simple uh, simulated experiment. So there are these things called FET physics. P-H-E-T space physics, you can Google that, and you'll see that FET physics has a whole lot of physics simulations. And in some cases, that will be the start of your lab or the basis of your lab. So three ways to do it, all, all uh, doable and, uh, let me see now, whoops, I wanna do that. Okay, here we go. Uh, think of it. Yeah, I guess, uh, I don't think I missed a slide, uh, but hopefully I didn't. Um, how do you write your report? Well, the report will be also available to you in D2L, and the instructions and the place where you write everything will also be in your report. So if you have a tablet, you can write online, you can do it that way. Otherwise, you can print out your uh, report, if you like, and write on it, and then take a picture of it and upload it in the D2L. Or you, as I said, most students at MUN, all students at MUN have free access to uh, Microsoft Office. So you can download Microsoft Office for free into your computer, uh, download the report from uh, Brightspace, type in all your numbers, all your answers, and then upload it into Brightspace. So reports are gonna be due 24 hours after the lab session begins. So if you can't make it to a particular lab right at the right time, you can do it, uh, you know, as long as you get the, everything done within 24 hours, everything's okay. So I think that's fairly straightforward. But again, it's all self-contained within uh, Brightspace. But you may need Microsoft Word, which is free to all MUN students. What about if you got some questions during the lab? Well, during the lab session, you actually say, let's say your lab is uh, 9 in the morning to 10.50 in the morning. Then during that session, there will be lab staff available online to answer your questions, right? If you can't make it 
to that section because you have a uh, a class or there's some kind of a conflict or you're in a very different time zone, then you can ask questions um, afterwards via email. So there will always be someone available to you to, to answer your questions. Um, there's also going to be a lab discussion forum. And so if you have a question and you uh, it's the middle of the night wherever you are or you just don't feel like emailing a lab instructor, you can go onto this discussion forum, post it, and very likely another student will answer it very quickly because students there tends to be always students online in the discussion forums. So this is a, this discussion forum is going to be monitored by lab staff. So uh, if there's an incorrect answer, and that happens sometimes by a student, they'll just step in and say, oh, no, you, you were mistaken. That was uh, the correct way to do that is this way. So. Uh, lots of ways to get answers, okay? Um, and I'll talk about another one in just a second. So there's many ways to get answers. So this is my last slide, so I try to keep it fairly brief, is that uh, there's an online physics help center. It has, again, has a dedicated Brightspace shell. You will be automatically enrolled in it. Um, so when you go into, into Brightspace, you'll see this uh, online physics help center. And in there, staff will be available to answer questions regarding either course, course questions or lab questions. You can see the picture here. This is our actual help center when uh, things are normal, and it uh, can be get, kept very busy, and students find it very useful. Um, but the online version is going to be a little bit different, as it has to be, and so there'll be staff available to answer questions all, all the time. Uh, there's going to be discussion forums there as well, so you can jump in and ask a question, and someone will try to help you. And again, it'll be monitored so that uh, we know that the answers are uh, correct, so that you don't that led, led astray. And uh, there may be some specific uh, online tutorials. So if we're coming up to a test, we'll have someone uh, the day before, a couple days before, run a couple of tutorials oh. on uh, Newton's laws and that sort of thing. So a very good space for you to get used to. Um, so it's a it's really just a dedicated spa uh, space to help you with all your physics questions. And then last but not least, you can see there's an, uh, an email address, physics help at mun.ca and you can always email that with a question and someone we we will be monitoring that uh, email and someone will get back to you with the answer to your question or at least direct you in the right space so i think that's uh all that i had to say hopefully i didn't mess this up um and i'll let uh carter step in and let me know uh, how things are going. <laughs> They're going good. Um, so a couple of the questions that came in while you were presenting, could you go back and show the cover page of the um, Physics 1050 textbook? Yep, happy to do that. So here's the cover page. It's called University F Physics. It actually says Young and Friedman down here and up on top. Sirzum Zemanski. Sirzum Zemanski, that text was around for many, many, many years, and it was a classic physics text. And uh, those guys uh, retired and whatnot. And so now it's been updated by Young and Friedman. So that's that's why there's sort of four names on it. I think Again, I'm like showing a separate PowerPoint. I'm not sure if it's fun for everybody or just me. But um, my kind of screen is stuck on the what are the options and how to collect data how to collect oh, how's uh um uh, okay just let me let's try again <laughs> i'll just try to share the screen again should it be better uh it didn't change for me mine it says pause at the top i don't know hello uh, if you click, maybe click where it says paused. Yep. There's not. I'll try to replicate it. Oh, hold on. Okay. Oh, there we go. What happened? That look better? What are you seeing now? Uh, just a black screen right now. It might be loading though. Okay, 
There we go. I got it now. Okay. Yeah. Somehow it paused. Uh, apologize for that, but hopefully we're back on track. Um, so this is the cover page. Got the fancy bridge on it. Again, four names: Sears and Zemanski, Young and Friedman. Young and Friedman have updated the old Sears and Zemanski, hence the four names. So. If there are any more questions, you can type that in the chat. Um, will teachers post their um, TTU? I assume it means tutorial. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, teach online uh, tutorials after they do them. Uh, I I would say the answer is probably yes, but you would need to check with your oh, actual okay. professor to determine that I would say that it's generally that people do do that if they do anything online they just record it and post it but really I can't say 100% that everybody will do it I suspect yes but I can't say yes most okay. all of the all of the lectures will be available uh, online and most of the material that people do do in the form of any kind of a tutorial will also be available online I don't see any problem with that but Again, you need to check your professor. Um, another question, would you please talk a little bit about the research in the physics department? Uh, physics and physical oceanography is mostly us. Um, most of the people in physics do one of things. They do sort of uh, uh, solid state type physics in the sense that they work on solids and uh, look at how liquids and solids interact, but they don't really do uh, like semiconductor solids there's not a lot of that the other part of our component of our department is there's a theoretical department th theoretical part and people study uh, things like quantum mechanics and uh, things like that and then the third part is ocean physics and physical oceanography that the oceanography part of it there's an oceanography department that studies the uh, oceanography of the world or an oceanography component that studies uh, the oceans so really that's the kind of things that we we do. It's not a big department, um, but it has a diverse sort of research things. We don't do any, people always ask, we don't do any astrophysics. There are astrophysics in our department. So if you want to study black holes, we're not really, you can get a good undergraduate physics degree and then go on as a graduate student to study astrophysics. And, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'm glad to answer any questions. And I'm also going to post that you said the um, help email was physicshelp at mun.ca. Yes, I think that's what it said. Uh, let me find it. Physicshelp at mun.ca. There we go. Um, are research ideas welcomed from first year students? Uh, generally speaking, first year students don't have enough background or expertise. Um, and this is just an honest reply to be involved in a research program. They don't really know enough physics yet or math to be useful for the people who want to hire them. So it's usually second year and beyond that most of our most students get involved in research. It's okay to reach out to a professor and say, I'm interested in doing that and be on their, and be on their radar. And they may hire you as a, there are these things called MUSEPs. And a MUSEP is a one-term uh, paid position. The university gives some money to, for this little position. And you can work, I think, I'm not sure the exact number of hours, I think it's five hours a week in a research lab. So MUSEP positions are always posted by the university. And if you're interested as a first-year student, then going after one of these MUSEP positions, they are competitive, is a really pretty good idea. And that'll give you a little bit of an idea of whether you like this kind of thing or not. And then if you get beyond second year mostly, there are scholarships and things like that that would allow you to work in the lab uh, over the summer as a research student. So usually second year and beyond is when we do most of our research with, with students, most students step into research, okay? Um, what is the addition of the book? Um, I assume that's probably for the 1050 book. 
Uh, it's the 1050 book is like 15th edition, I think. Yes, yeah, 15th. Oh, spelled wrong. <laughs> Doesn't look right. Yeah. Okay, so it's the 15th edition. Um, somebody goes, I already have credits for Physics 1050. Will I be eligible to apply for a research position? No. No. It doesn't matter what courses you have. The research positions are usually dependent upon whether somebody has, the, the person who's going to hire you has research money to do it and whether your abilities and interests match their interests, you know? So if you're interested in, in working with a particular professor, you should reach out to them and establish contact. And uh, that's really the best way to do it. Yeah, it's always good to get to know your professors. I see Allison's yeah. dropped yeah. a link to the um, research MUSAP information for physics. Um, somebody right. says, can I study theoretical physics at MUN? Yes, you can. You can study. Uh, we have a, a bunch of theoreticians in our uh, academic uh, faculty. And uh, so you can study quantum mechanics. You can study uh, fluids. You can study uh, solid state. So there's a fairly wide range of theoretical interests. So no problem to do that. Are there any more questions? So again, if you're interested in a specific type of research, what you should do is go to our homepage, look at the faculty interests, contact the faculty and say, hey, I'm I'm so and so, and this is the thing I'm interested in. Can we have a chat about it? And they would love to talk to you about it. So that's really the best way to establish uh, contact. Not seeing any new questions. If you have a question, so, oh. okay. Uh, so these this video will be posted, and you can um, look at it again and and. Our contact information is there. Again, my email, I think it's there somewhere. I forget now. It's rgoulding at mun.ca. And just send me an email and I'll get back to you as quick as I can and be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, and somebody says, just to reiterate, uh, can I study astrophysics at MUN? No. There's really, you can do a couple of astrophysics courses. But yeah, to actually study, so we have uh, a second year astronomy course, which is 2151, and we have a third year astrophysics course, but that's pretty much it for astrophysics at MUN. You, but that being said, most people who study astrophysics get a honors physics degree and then go on and do graduate work. But you, so you can study some astrophysics at an undergraduate level here, but not in depth. Um, and we have a question. So somebody bought a physics book secondhand and they were wondering where do they see the, the mastering physics code? Well, if you bought it secondhand, that code's already been used. So mm -hmm. it's pretty much no good to you. There's no way to buy a code separately. Buying it secondhand was uh, not so much a, a mistake. It's just that the way that we have the bundles all set up, the secondhand books don't come with the code, unless the, the student who sold you the book never used the code. Then it's still, it should be there, it's a card. It's usually a card in the back of the book. Yeah, the code, the codes aren't sold separately from the textbook? No, no. Um, and so if you buy a code, if you buy a code on, you can buy them online, but they won't work with, they won't work with them on, textbook. How much does the university support ideas regarding forming new theories in physics, um, both financially and academic? Well, that's kind of a broad question. I think you would, the answer to that is that if you have such an idea, then you would contact somebody, one of the faculty who has the same interests and bring it forward to them. We can study quantum mechanics at MUN, right? Oh, yes. You can study as much quantum mechanics as you like. <laughs> no problem. It's pretty mathematical. It's a pretty mathematical topic. 
And uh, but no problem. If you want to study quantum mechanics, this is a good place for you. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? And after the presentation, if you think of a question, like I normally do, I always think questions after the fact. Um, Dr. Golding did give his email that you can reach out to him if you have any more questions. Here's another question. How do you compare MUN to top universities like UBC or Harvard in terms of physics? Well, tuition's a lot cheaper and uh, all of our physics students that have gotten degrees here at Memorial have gone on to great things. They've never had any, there's never been any limitations uh, on the quality of the education that they get in the, in the physics department here. And that's true for Memorial. Many Memorial students have gone on to great things. So it's as good a university as any university. Tuition's a lot cheaper. I guess that's all I would say about it. You know, um, We have a great track record for sending students on to, uh, with our degrees to great things. So. We're not big, but we're mighty. Is that it? I think that might be all of the questions. Not seeing any more come in. Um, like, I, oh, um, how many Nobel Prizes have the University alumni had? Zero. Zero. Right. I don't know the answer to that. That's 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 like an impossible question for me to know. <laughs> I don't know. When I think about it, maybe there's people out there from memorial that have Nobel Prizes. I just don't know the answer to that. I said zero, but I never really thought about it, you know? So I can't really answer that question. That's a question for university public relations. So it sounds like that's it though. People are I uh, think have so. asked most of the questions that they want to ask. But if you have any more questions, please feel free to contact me or the department and uh, I will gladly get back to you as uh, soon as I can. And hopefully this little introduction gave you some idea of how we're going to present physics courses in first year this semester and at the labs. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, thank you everybody and thank you for asking those questions. Thank you, Dr. Golding, for answering those questions. You're welcome. Um, this presentation will be posted on the orientation Brightspace in case you missed the first half or the last half or anything. But thank you for coming out.